Hey guys, welcome back to another What's For Dinner video. For this video, we are going to start out with some hash brown casserole. I took this to Easter lunch and I wanted to add it into the What's For Dinner for you guys. So here's just a few things you're going to need. You'll need a grated onion and I like to grate it in the bowl. That way you can still have the juices in there. And I just use my cheese grater and it makes it super easy. We've got some cheese, some green pepper, some butter, salt, pepper, and onion powder, and garlic powder and some cream soups, some sour cream, of course your hash browns, and then I love topping it with some butter and Ritz crackers. But like you've seen in the bowl, um, I just have my onion. And like I said, I like using the cheese grater and grating, grating it. Um, I feel like it just helps distribute it all evenly and having those onion juices help as well. So I'm just gonna take and dump that whole bag of hash browns in there, they are frozen. And then I'm gonna go in with a half of a green pepper and I've just cut that really small. And then I'm gonna go in with one can of cheddar soup, the condensed soup, and then one can of cream of mushroom soup. We love this recipe, it's super flavorful, very cheesy and delicious because you're adding in that extra cheese from the, the condensed soup mix. I uh, love doing it that way and then if you don't like cream of mush cream of mushroom you can do cream of chicken that's totally optional i just like the flavor that it gives from the cream of mushroom and so you're just going to add everything together with your seasonings i always use garlic and salt and pepper and then i put some cheese in there i like to have a a mixture i like to either do the triple cheddar from walmart or um, the colby monterey jack for this one, I used what I had left, and I had the Colby and Monterey Jack, plus I had a little bit of Gouda left over, and y'all, this was so good. Add your sour cream in, mix it all together, pop it in your casserole dish, and then I top it with some Ritz crackers. I just take a sleeve of crackers, crush it up really fine, and I take some melted butter, put it in there as well, mix that all together, and then I love topping it with that. I just love the crunch that it gives. I know a lot of people use um, corn flakes. You can use that as well. I just love the buttery richness from the Ritz crackers.
and then I just bake that in a 375 degree oven for almost an hour. You just want to make sure that it's nice and bubbly and golden brown on top. Y'all, this is so freaking delicious. Okay, y'all, so I'm getting supper started. Tonight we are having bacalao. We have had this several times. This recipe was actually from a recipe swap from Lynn. I'll have her channel listed down below, and then I'll have that original swap video. I'll have it down below as well. Um, we, we swapped recipes. If you don't know who she is, she lives in Norway. She lived in Spain at the time, but now she lives in Norway. But, um, so she swapped recipes and she tried something from us and then we tried something from her and this has become a family favorite and we absolutely love it so i went ahead for sake of time and chopped up my veggies so i have a couple um good chunk size of potatoes i've got tri peppers i've got half of a orange half of a yellow half of a red i have a whole uh, medium size onion and then I have a pretty good handful of some baby carrots. So first we're just going to melt this butter down and then we are going to saute our peppers and onions together till they are nice and soft and translucent. And then we will continue on with the next step. Okay, so now that our onion and pepper mixture is translucent, I'm gonna add in a good tablespoon or two of garlic. And then I'm gonna go in with our potatoes. In our carrots. Okay. Then you're gonna add in your broth. You can get regular chicken broth, or if you don't want to use chicken broth, you can use a veggie broth, or if you have fish broth, you can use fish from bone broth. I have just got some warm water here and I've been trying to dissolve some cubes, chicken cubes, but I've got four cups of water. So I like to do extra broth because we really like soaking our bread in the broth because it's such good flavor. So I, I always add six cups in total, but you can definitely do less. Um, but for us, six cups works perfect. So I had the four cups of the chicken broth and then I do two cups of this tomato broth and all it is so good. diced tomatoes I like using the fire roasted because it gives a really good flavor okay so now you're pretty much done at this point you're going to put a lid on it let it simmer until your potatoes and carrots are completely cooked through Okay, so while the potatoes 
and all that are cooking up. I went ahead and have prepped the cod. So I just buy the um, cod from Kroger. I got two bags. We always do two bags because there's only two fillets per bag. Um, these are the 12 ounce bags. They normally go on sale for about $4.99 a pack. Um, it's not that expensive at all. And so I just took and cut up the fillets into like bite sized pieces. And then you want to make sure that you dry it really well. So I'm going to kind of pat it. You want to be gentle with it. And make sure that you check your fish for bones. Because even though it says boneless and skinless, I found two bones. So, and those can be dangerous if somebody eats those and could accidentally choke or whatever. So just make sure you're watching out for those. But I'm just going to sit here and kind of keep these covered and get the moisture out of them. And then we will put some salt on top of them and then we will arrange them on top once this gets almost done and then i do have my oven preheated at 400 so when it gets closer to time once i add my fish in i will throw these bad boys in the oven to warm through they are already cooked I always get the already cooked ones they're just french baguettes you can get them in the bakery section at walmart or the bakery section at kroger I got them at Kroger this time, and these, I'm telling y'all, these are a must-have for this recipe. The One of the things I do with this recipe is I double the broth because it is so delicious, and you got to have the bread to soak up the broth. So, this is a must-have, in our opinion. If you can have bread, please get the French baguettes. We have tried it with different kinds, just loaf bread, or I made little... Um, I made little rolls one time and these you just cannot beat the crisp the crispness of the outside and the soft inside you just got to you have to get you a french baguette y'all you got to so this is cooking up and i'm so excited Once your root vegetables are tender, then you can go ahead and start adding in your fish. And then you're just going to cover it and set a 10 minute timer to let the fish cook. And y'all, it is so good. So, so good, I swear. This is a family favorite, well, except for Winston. But it is a family favorite. I'm so glad that we swapped this a recipe to begin with. It is so delicious. And it it's just so good. Y'all gotta try it. I have got two chicken breasts here that I'm about to cook up in the oven. Just because I have the oven on and... I'm waiting on other stuff um, before I put something else in the oven. So while I have the time, I'm gonna go ahead and cook up this chicken. We just need it cooked and shredded for a recipe. Um, I'm gonna be making some cordon bleu um, casserole later in the week. And so I wanna go ahead and cook this. Shoot, that seasoning gets me every time. So now I gotta see. Oh my gosh. The pepper in this is, whew, I love it though. Okay, so I'm just seasoning up both sides really good with the SPG. And, and then I'm just gonna put foil on top of this, make like a little meat pouch, foil pouch. And I'm just gonna cook this in the oven. Um, I really normally like doing it in the Instant Pot, but my counters are pretty full right now because I'm working on other videos. So I don't have room to sit the Instant Pot. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw it in the oven since the oven's on, but I will leave my video for how I cook my chicken breast in the Instant Pot down below so y'all can see it because it, it comes out amazing, so juicy and tender. Um, but I'm just going to pop this in there for now, and then, like I said, we'll have it for later in the week. So y'all will see this again later in the week whenever we put together our casserole. 
The next dinner was my three packet por pork roast with some mashed potatoes and some biscuits. This will be a whole separate video this coming week, so y'all stay tuned for it. Hey y'all, we have got, I don't know what we got. I've just got some ingredients here that I'm gonna kind of make a casserole idea. <clears throat> Uh, I had, my original idea was chicken cordon bleu, but I thought I had Swiss cheese. I don't have Swiss cheese. So I've just got some mozzarella and cheddar. So we're just gonna kind of roll with it. We've got some honey ham cut up here. We got some already cooked chicken breast. Y'all see me cook those up. Got a can of cream of chicken. And then I have this four cheese, a uh, creamy, creamy four cheese rice roni. So this is kind of gonna be the base of it. And then we're gonna add in all of this stuff. Mix it together, put it in a casserole pan. The oven is preheated at 375. Put it in a greased casserole dish, bake it up and just kind of see. Like I said, I wish I had Swiss cheese, but we're just gonna kind of roll with it. It should be delicious. Anything with rice, chicken, and ham should be perfect. So um, let me set you up and then y'all can just kind of watch me put it together and we're gonna see how this turns out together. So first I just took that box of rice aroni and dumped it in the bowl along with the packet that came with it, the seasoning packet that was in it. And then I added in the can of cream soup, the can of cream and chicken soup. And then I filled that up with milk, poured that in there. And then I did a can of water also. And then I dumped that in there. And then I just gave that all a good mix and put it in my casserole dish. Now I'm adding on that pre-cooked chicken. I ended up using about all of that. I liked it. It was nice and meaty. You could definitely get away with one. I feel like this is one of those recipes where you could st stretch your meat if you needed to. But we didn't have to. And so I ended up using just all of that. And then I topped it with that ham. And like I said, you could also use diced ham. If you have diced ham, I just used the lunch meat because that's what I had. And then I topped this with some cheese. I wish I had Swiss, of course, but y'all, this was really good. This was really good with that cheesy rice mixture and then the mild cheddar with a little bit of the mozzarella. This was super good. I would make it again. The only thing I would change is I would cook this, say, for like 45 minutes like this. Take it out, give it a good stir, 
and then I would maybe put like a breadcrumb mixture on top like panko or even my famous what I, my go-to is the butter and Ritz crackers I would even do that that's that's our only complaint is Luke and I both were like it needs some kind of breading so that's what I would do next time but it cooked for over an hour over an hour y'all so while that was in the oven I just chopped up one squash and one zucchini and I just fried that in a pan with some butter added in some of that um suckle busters spg with some bacon bits and y'all this was really really good i'm so excited for some fresh veggies this summer and i i know that sounds weird saying because if you know i'm not a huge veggie eater but there is certain veggies i will like and in the summer i'm so excited So here it is out of the oven after I've stirred it. Like I said, our only complaint was it needed uh, some kind of bread topping. But y'all, for this to be a made-up recipe, this was pretty dang good. I, it is pretty good. I will definitely be making it again. Just adding that bread topping on there. But like I said, it cooked for an hour. So I would, and I would also recommend covering it with foil. Let it cook for like 30, 45 minutes with the foil on. Take the foil off. You can add the breading and then pop it back in there for another 10 to 15 minutes. But this is super good. We will definitely make this again. I was pretty proud of myself for making up a recipe. But that is it, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this What's for Dinner video. I hope it gave you some meal inspiration to cook more for your family. I would love to know your meal plan for this coming week. Let me know your family favorites down below. Maybe it's something that we can try. And I hope y'all have a fabulous week. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.